there's a pretty strong and, and growing suspicion that longer term global changes happening in our climate may be tied into some of these droughts and floods and freezes that we're seeing. In that we know that, that the buildup of CO2 and other greenhouse gases is adding more heat energy to our atmosphere. That's just basic physics. And that energy is used to either evaporate water, to warm things, or to move air around. That's basically how our atmosphere uses energy. So you add more energy, you're going to step up all of those things. As you move air around, then we get stronger winds, we get more violent storms, you evaporate more water. That means that in some places they're going to see more flooding or more snowfall. Uh, and it can also change where that flooding and, and, uh, and snowfall occurs so that you may get increased droughts in, in other areas. So some of the longer term shifts that are related to climate change are probably connected with some of these more localized year-to-year -year droughts and or floods that we're seeing from one region to the next. There actually is a connection between the current drought here along the California coast and the oceans. And it's one of those good news and bad news stories. People that monitor nearshore ocean health are reporting that actually there are fewer beach closures and things look a little bit healthier nearshore this year than they have traditionally in, in recent years. And that would sound like really good news. And it turns out that is very likely connected to the drought in that there is less runoff from the nearshore environment from the land into the ocean and a lot of pollution, a lot of the sources of that bacteria are related to that runoff from the land. So with the drought, less runoff, the ocean's actually a little healthier right now. The downside to that is when it does start to rain again, all of that may be kind of built up and we may see a, a significant increase in the amount of nearshore pollution when we do start to get some rain and runoff again. All right, for the average animal swimming out there in the ocean, I don't know that they're seeing much of an impact. Uh, animals that live in estuaries though, and we have a number of coastal streams and estuaries that rely on freshwater inflows coming into the ocean, they're really feeling the pinch. So if you look at fishes that maybe live most of the time in the ocean but spawn in freshwater, well, if your spawning stream has dried up, especially if it's dry year after year and you can't spawn, then that has a, a pretty direct impact on your populations. Good example here in California, the Department of Fish and Game has actually had to truck young salmon from hatcheries to, the, to San Francisco Bay to release them. Normally they would just put them in the, the American River, the Feather River, the Sacramento River and let them swim down to the bay. There's not enough river to swim in this year. So yeah, the drought's creating some kind of interesting challenges for certain animals, especially if their life is more connected to fresh water. We don't realize every time you turn on a light switch or use any, any kind of electricity, that electricity, if you could follow the wires back, would go to a power plant that was probably burning something to make that electricity. They burn something that puts CO2 in the atmosphere, and that wreaks havoc in so many ways. Anything we can do to help reduce the rate that we're putting that CO2 and other greenhouse gases up in the atmosphere ultimately is going to help reduce the likelihood of these extreme weather events. I personally have some hope and, and some, the scientist in me sometimes is, is doubtful about that, but uh, we have to have hope. And I, I've seen over and over again where if we give Mother Nature half a chance, there's some, some remarkable abilities for nature to heal itself if, if we allow that to happen. Thank you.